Oh, hi, I'm the heretic. Just to clarify, when I talk about humans, I am also including lizards. I'm just using the term human as it most clearly conveys these ideas. Anyways, what does it mean to be human? It's a topic philosophers have tackled for a long time, all the way back to Aristotle. So what do we have to show for thousands of years of philosophical and biological progress? Humans are social animals, cooperating with like interests. We created language, sounds, corresponding to glyphs that, when used in sequence, convey complex and abstract ideas to other humans. Abstract ideas allow us to contemplate and make judgments of things beyond our sense perception. From objective a priori knowledge like mathematics and ethics to fictional concepts like Batman or the state. Thus, we can act according to a framework of right and wrong, making us moral agents. Since we are speaking in terms of right and wrong, it's necessary to define right and wrong. A wrong is an action that cannot be justified under the framework of ethics, which are derived from logic, which is objective. Actions such as initiating force against another person or violating self-ownership of another cannot be justified. Conversely, a right, in the context of right and wrong, are actions that can be justified. Or put simply, the absence of a wrong. Self-interest is what I believe human nature boils down to. People motivated to act in ways that gives them a benefit, both perceived or actual. The emotional gratification of charitable donation, the material benefit of employment being examples. Now, self-interest is neither a wrong nor a right, as valuing your interest is passive, therefore not an action. Now, obviously, what's in people's interests can vary and be used to justify virtually any action up to and including hurting people. A mugger holds up a woman in a dark alley because it's in the mugger's self-interest to grab her purse for her money, conflicting with the woman's self-interest to not be mugged and keep her purse. So what does this have to do with government? Well, I have heard it argued that a government is required as a mitigating factor against human nature, such that it causes harm. The threat of government retaliation a deterrence for criminality. Therefore, the absence of a government would result in increased criminality. This does make a lot of sense. After all, the threat of imprisonment is quite terrifying. Of course, we can't assume that people in the government are somehow exempt from human nature, being humans themselves. Father of the U.S. Constitution, James Madison, said it best. It may be a reflection on human nature that such devices should be necessary to control the abuses of government. But what is government itself but the greatest of all reflections on human nature? If men were angels, no government would be necessary. If angels were to govern, neither external nor internal controls on government would be necessary. In framing a government which is to be administered by men over men, the great difficulty lies in this. You must first enable the government to control the governed, and in the next place oblige it to control itself. Now, Madison was arguing for why the U.S. Constitution should be adopted at the time. If humans are capable of evil, then humans who happen to be in government are equally capable of evil. Thus, controls of government itself are necessary. Unfortunately, Madison didn't see the contradiction. If human nature is so intolerable, it requires a government to control, and government is the greatest reflection of human nature. A government full of humans cannot be relied upon to curb their own human nature. If they could, then the same would apply to the people, therefore making a government completely unnecessary. Even if we aren't taking Madison's word for it, there isn't a configuration of government that avoids this, where humans are not present. Thus, the human nature argument to justify government cannot be true, but let's dig deeper. I brushed on ethics earlier. How does that relate to human nature? Our ability to understand abstract yet objectively provable a priori concepts like mathematics and logic mean we can understand ethics. Since ethics, as said before, are derived from logic, and reality is consistent, and we know logic is universal and objective because reality is consistent. 
Ethics are universal and objective as well, since they derive from logic. We derive right and wrong from ethics, and the extent to which we can be held to the standard of ethics is proportional to our ability to understand them. This is what being a moral agent means. Now, human nature tells us what people can do. Ethics tells us people can't justify doing bad things and what those bad things are. Therefore, ethics give victims of wrongdoing a legitimate claim to seek justice on their aggressor. I cannot steal from you and claim myself righteous without rejecting all of reason and logic. Yet the state does these very things and are applauded for doing so. The government steals from us through taxation, imposes rules on us through legislation, and restrict our voluntary activity through regulation. If we fail to comply, they will escalate force against us until we're either kidnapped or killed. It doesn't matter if the humans who perform these actions call themselves a government or Zardoz. The gun is good. The gun is good. The penis is evil. They are not justified. The only way to avoid this is to reject logic entirely by creating arbitrary moral categories wherein one group of humans have moral agency but the rest do not. This is the only way to justify statism. After all, nobody thinks twice about a miner striking a rock with a pickaxe even though said miner would be initiating force against that rock. The difference is people are not rocks, and it is not justified to initiate force against moral agents. Through reason, we know if humans are good, then no government is necessary. If humans are evil, then you don't dare let them govern over others. Statism rejects human nature, plain and simple. Our ability to reason is a direct threat to their power, because once we take logic and ethics to their logical conclusion, we learn that not only do we not need the state, but they are the very criminal enterprise they purport to protect us from. Immoral people will be drawn to the state and seek to use the levers of power to live at the expense of someone else. If robbers wish to steal, they simply call themselves IRS agents. Counterfeiters will join the Federal Reserve, and murderers need only put on a military uniform, and they will be called heroes for doing so. All that stands in their way is a population armed with the reason and logic Almighty God has blessed us with. All that is asked of us is that we use it. Questions? Comments? Critique? What do you think about human nature? Anything you'd like to add about anything I said? Support me through Patreon and Ko-Fi. Like, share, and subscribe to become a heretic today.